Access more. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm Candace. No matter who you are, life can feel like a roller coaster. But in the beauty and the chaos, life is full of love, joy, and kindness. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm Candace. <laughs> but this podcast isn't about me, it's about you. I'm here to introduce you to some of my friends and to have open conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. I am so excited to introduce to you my season one guest host, Tara Lee Cobble. Now, Tara Lee finds so much joy in talking about the Bible, and that's why I asked her to join me today. She hosts the Bible Recap Podcast, where she walks listeners through the Bible in a year or two, if you're like me. (laughs) I can't wait for you to be a part of our conversations. Before we jump in, I want you to know about our favorite place for you to watch and listen to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast, Access More. The Access More network is home to great shows from people like Paula Ferris, Benjamin and Kirsten Watson, Bob Goff, and so many more. And we are thrilled that season one of the Candace Cameron Bure podcast will be available there too. To watch full video episodes of my show, go to accessmore.com, the Access More app, or you can follow the link directly from candice.com. I'll also have a link in all of my show notes. Okay, Tara Lee, we're going to start off with some fun facts. All right. One of my fun facts is that I am a matcha drinker, not a coffee drinker. I watched you drinking matcha this morning. I did. I yeah. had it this did you morning. Did your matcha bowl? Yeah. I have my matcha bowl. It's a whole ritual. <laughs> I keep my matcha in the refrigerator. I have the little uh, s- kind of scooper. It looks like a metal, a uh, wooden stick. Uh-huh. And I put it in the little strainer first so that it doesn't clump. Once I add my hot water and then you mix it with mm-hmm. a wooden matcha whisk And then it foams up beautifully to this bright green color. And then you pour the hot steamed water to fill the rest of the cup up. And you actually pour it over the wooden whisk so it cleans the whisk while you're filling your cup. That's efficient. (laughs) It is efficient. (laughs) And I love it. I love it. I love how it tastes. I love that it's good for me. But I also love that it it is made in Japan, which is a culture I love. And I've been able to visit Japan five times. What? I just, I, I love it. And I, so many things about it. I love the people there. And I, I, um, I, I love how respectful they are and how clean they are. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot of tradition in that mm-hmm. country that I really, really appreciate. So me having matcha every morning is like <laughs> taking this little piece of culture and history with me right here where I live, you know, in my house every day. So I know that you have traveled all over the place and Israel is one of your favorites. It is. Which I can't wait to hear stories. But first I have to know, are you matcha or coffee? I am a coffee girl. Although watching you make your matcha this morning, I was like, I need to ask Candace to make me a cup of matcha because maybe I, I just haven't had good ex- matcha. Right. I mean, the experience you described sounded delicious. <laughs> so, but I'm a coffee drinker. But the funny thing is Israel has, uh, much like Europe, a lot of the people drink instant coffee. Hmm. And so that's, a, that was a new thing to me, but that I really kind of started to love. Like now when I miss Israel, if I go make some of my Israeli instant coffee. It transports me back there, like with you in Japan. Is it different? Is their instant coffee different than our it's instant coffee? It's much better than our okay. coffee. <laughs> now they okay. do have very strong coffee there that is like a Turkish coffee where um, there's the That's ground. That's like mud in the almost, bottom, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to get near the bottom. Okay. Um, some people do, but not me. And often there will be, they'll give you a little shot of espresso and they'll give you a date. And mm. um, uh, we jokingly refer to it as a coffee date. Um, so that's, um, <laughs> that's why I kind of have so many I coffee dates that. in Israel. <laughs> I love Someday that. when you come to Israel with me, I'll take you on a coffee date. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, well, I would love to know I, some of your favorite stories visiting the Middle East. I can't wait to go. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you've walked in some of the same places Jesus has walked and the disciples have. And yeah. it's amazing. So what's one of your favorite stories? One of my favorite sites there. So I've done Israel and Jordan. I've been to Israel, I think 18 times. And wow. it's, wow. I can't get enough. I can't get enough. 
Um, and there's a site that the first few times that I went there, one of the amazing things about Israel is that there are sites being discovered all the time. And so when I first went to Israel in 2012, the site that I'm about to tell you about mm -hmm. did not yet exist. It hadn't opened because it hadn't wow. been, yeah. So it hadn't been excavated yet. And so it's a place called Magdala and it is on the shoreline of the Sea of Galilee. And you may recognize the word Magdala if you're mm -hmm. a Bible reader, because Mary Magdalene was from Magdala. And um, it was this, this town on the shore of, near where Jesus lived. He lived in a town called Capernaum, and this is just south of there. And um, so in Magdala, what's so cool about it is, first of all, I love that archaeology continues to prove the Bible true, because for a long time, people would read scripture and it says, Jesus taught in all the synagogues around the Galilee. And all these people who are like scientists and uh, people who are digging in the earth and all those mm -hmm. people who are excavating things are saying, there are no synagogues in the Galilee. So this is scriptures lying because there aren't any synagogues mm -hmm. for him to teach in. They have since discovered seven synagogues from the first century in that region. And, and they just keep, it just keeps proving scripture true. So what's cool about this one in particular is they were trying to build a hotel for all the tourists. And the first dig that the, that the excavator machine did when mm -hmm. it dug down into the earth, it hit a stone that is called the Magdala stone. That's what they've named it now. It's in a museum. The Magdala stone was the centerpiece of ancient synagogues. It's where they would roll out the scrolls. It's kind of like a modern day pulpit. Okay. And they recognize it has all this beautiful artwork on the side. And they're like, this is what they use in synagogues. So they have to stop building the hotel. Wow. And, but they discover this, it's a mosaic tile floor, fully intact. And that stone where they roll out the scroll. So Jesus would have unrolled a scroll on that stone to teach in that synagogue. Now that stone, like I said, is in a museum, but what isn't in a museum, that's my favorite artifact in Israel. And when you go, you can touch it. Okay. It's, Do I get to poke uh, it with a stick? You can poke it with a stick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's a, a reference to an earlier episode. You should go back and check out <laughs> previous episodes if you missed the lava story. But um, there's, a, there's a bowl that's a wash basin that would be outside the entrance to synagogues. And law-abiding Jews would wash their hands in that to purify their hands before they go into the synagogue. That means Jesus, being the law-abiding Jew that he was, would have washed his hands in that wash basin before entering that synagogue. And the fact that the hands that built the earth, that built that rock itself, washed in them, were pierced for my sins. Like I'm just, every time I see that stone, I'm just, I want to like just hug it and like yes, crawl inside yes. it. And like, it's remarkable that you actually can touch it. They don't, to them, it's just, oh, it's a stone we found. But to me, it's like this precious thing that's like, Jesus like was here and it doesn't make it any, it's not more powerful. It's not a holy item. It's not a whatever, but it's beautiful to me. Yeah. And it reminds me of his humanity. Yeah. You know, I just, oh, I love it. I can't wait to see it <laughs> and touch it one day. I'm excited that's for you to incredible. come. That's incredible. Yeah. So Magdala is probably my favorite place okay. to just have that, have that moment. What about you? Are there other places that you've been, um, Japan or otherwise that your faith has kind of come alive a bit? You know, there was such a difference. I went to Africa once I was in Ghana mm -hmm. and I went on a 10 day mission trip with my mom and a pastor and a very small group from a church. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was remarkable to see the African people. We flew into Ghana and then we drove about 14 hours in a very s small, uncomfortable 15 passenger van, mm -hmm. like, well, small, but, uh, about to this village that was in the middle of nowhere and they didn't have much. And it was incredible to see the joy that they had. Mm -hmm because their joy didn't come from stuff, which is the antithesis of the American way right? <laughs> that we're all used to, mm -hmm. that, that our stuff does give us comfort and joy. And I remember actually sharing the gospel with a bunch of pastors that had come from villages all over, and some of them had walked all day to be there. And it was pouring rain 
Like, and we were under a roof, which was their church. Uh, and it was just a, a, a very thin tin roof mm-hmm. with kind of mud hut walls. And we, we were in there and I was trying to share my testimony, but it was so loud because of the rain right. on the tin roof. And I, I don't have a very strong voice in, you would think I would, I've never done theater, (laughs) but um, it's not as, as strong, but I was using all my might to, to voice above the rain Mm -hmm. on the tin. Um, And it, that was such a special moment for me, but I don't even think all of the pastors there even kind of cared what I said or even heard Mm -hmm. half of it only because they were just so grateful that the presence of the Lord was filled in that room. And they just, they just were happy that people were coming to, to share in the gospel with Mm. them and help others in their village and provide medical services. And, and it was incredible, but there was, there's just, there was something about all of them who knew the Lord in a very different way Mm -hmm. than I did. And it was, not only refreshing for me, but incredibly humbling Mm -hmm. for me. Uh, Another place that I often really feel that my faith comes alive is when I'm able to spend time with, with women that are really grounded in their faith. And we've had a couple of those Mm -hmm. very special weekends or moments Mm -hmm. when we get to come together as women of faith that Mm -hmm pray with each other and talk about the hard issues and sing worship together and just focus on the Lord for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Those those special conferences or weekends, whatever you want to call them, they've been very powerful for me. Yeah. And I've been so encouraged. And that's what, I mean, that's what friends are for. That's what the body yeah. of Christ is for. Yeah. That's what we are to do with mm-hmm. one another. And they've they're exhausting in the best of ways because sometimes when you are so connected with God and people are pouring into you, but it's also emotional. So it's depleting as well. Like you kind of feel (laughs) wrecked after one of those, like you've just given everything. (laughs) And yet it just, it fills you up in a way that then I go, okay, I can now go back outside. I can go back to the battleground. I can go mm. to the battlefield. And I, I feel like I've got my armor. I've been built up from those encouraging words around me and like, let's go do this. Yeah. It's, I, I love that the stories that you share involve these other people who know and love the Lord and how much you benefit by being around them yes. and that you see more about who God is by being around them. Like you see that he, he has gifted and equipped the saints in Ghana in, in ways that man, it's hard for us to tap into because of our life circumstances, yet he still meets us in our circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's like, no, no, you have to give away everything you own and move to a mud hut to, in order to really tap into the spirit. Like, no, we each have these different things and it's beautiful how the body of Christ works together in that way. And um, how the, the worldwide church serves each other by reminding each other who God is. Like that's one of the things that's so great about carrying the spirit with us all the time is that he he does use us to encourage each other and we all need each other. None of us, none of us get to live unto ourselves. Um, and, you know, we talked in the last episode about how the words that the spirit is described as in scripture, um, Jesus calls him the comforter, the guide, the teacher, the mm-hmm. reminder. And those are things that we can each do for each other as well. We can comfort each other with the words of truth. Mm -hmm. We can help guide each other through the discernment we get from the word and the spirit. Mm -hmm. We can teach each other. Like we're learning from, from each other things about God right now. And so we get to demonstrate the spirit spirit's power to each other by being the thing that he is to us, to others, like comforter, spirit guide. Like it's just a really cool way that God kind of distributes himself throughout the world through the global church. And I, I'm so glad I'm a part of it because Mm -hmm. it's a joy not only to get that from somebody else, but also be able to distribute that to somebody else. Yeah. You know, when you're having a hard day and I can pray for you or when I'm having a hard day and you can pray for me, like. And that would be the spirit working in all of us. Yeah. That's this, like, we aren't, we aren't doing that. I don't have any wisdom of my own. Any wisdom that I speak to you or anybody else is given to me by God. Like it's him at work in me and through Mm -hmm. me. Any comfort that I might offer anybody is meaningless if it all just terminates on something I, some platitude I dreamed up, you know, like it's got to come from him. He initiates it 
in us and, and moves us through that process with other believers. And it's just the best. Like, yeah. And there's no way, no other way to know what that is mm -hmm. unless you're reading the word of God. Yeah. That's true because you won't have any measuring stick to measure it against. Mm -hmm. It might be a lie or, and a lot of things sound really good when you see them on social media, these like one liners and yep. like, God's never going to give you more than you can handle. Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that is not in the Bible. He does give you more than, because yep. then other people can shoulder it for you. He can come along and equip and sustain you through yep. that process. And so those kind of platitudes that make us feel really empowered a lot of times are not accurate. They're not yeah. biblically true. Yeah. And that leads to a lot of despair when you feel like, oh man, I didn't have enough faith to pull that off. Or like, if you right. think you're leaning into that thing that you think is true, well, God's never going to give me more than I can handle. Like, I guess I'm not strong enough. And right. so those things we have to, we do have to measure them against scripture. Um, and one of the things that, you know, as we've been talking about the spirit, and we talk about how mysterious and sometimes confusing that he can be. Uh, one of the things that I've been encouraged by is that, so some places will take that mystery and that confusing and they'll like lean into it to, to magnify the, the mystery and the confusion. But what the spirit does for a lot of us is clarify things he teaches and mm -hmm. he guides and there's clarity in teaching. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I think about a, quote unquote, a, a spirit filled church, what that looks like, what the scripture does is teach us who Jesus is, remind us of the words of Christ. The spirit points to Jesus. He doesn't point to himself. Mm. He points to Jesus and he points to the father. Like we talked about in an earlier episode, like the Trinity, the three persons of the Trinity are always pointing to each other. And so the spirit is not he doesn't rev his engine at a red light. He, um, he points to, right. to Jesus and the right. father. He's not like, look at me. Yeah. He's like, look at the truth. Look at the son, look at the father. And yeah. it's really beautiful. And he does that in beautiful. our own hearts too. Like scripture talks about the, the fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, kindness goodness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. <laughs> <laughs> and I think is kindness one of your favorites? Um, cause that's is. really important to you. Kindness is very important to me. Yeah. I, I did write a book called kind is the new classy. Yes. And I, I wrote that right after I had done two years co-hosting the view Wow. Uh, because it was it, in, in front of the camera, it can be, look like a hostile environment because it's five opinionated woman, women mm -hmm. giving their opinions on very hot topics that are mostly political, sometimes religious topics uh, and social topics. But I was, I was, um, you know, the one chosen to represent a seat that wasn't represented by really any of the other four women at uh, definitely, certainly not three other women. Mm -hmm. And so it, be it became this show where I love having conversation. I love learning from people that mm -hmm. have different opinions from me. Yeah. I don't ever not want to be friends with someone because they have a different opinion from me mm -hmm. because I'm like, we can still learn from each other. Absolutely. I might not change my opinion and you might not change yours, but you still have something to offer me and I have something to offer you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is at the moment, but anyway. So I love the conversation, but the the basis of that show is to really, really get in there with your opinion and then argue your opinion. So if someone doesn't have the same opinion, they really want you to go back and forth. And that yeah. is not my nature. Right. I'm like, let's just discuss it and then we can move on. You right. know? <laughs> let's just say. I'm not trying to win. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not about winning. Yeah. And, and I, kindness became even more important because I always, one, wanted to represent God, the mm. best that I could as a person seated at that table. Mm -hmm. And I know the attributes of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that, that uh, the fruit of the Spirit that you mm -hmm. just talked about. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do my best, which some days I did okay. Some days weren't as good as mm -hmm. others, but, but to be a good representative and of God. And so I thought, okay, I, I want to learn how to argue 
I don't really like arguing, but I'll learn to argue, but I always want it to be respectful. I always want to hear the other person. I want to listen to them and I want to consider it Mm -hmm. and I'll share my opinion back and forth. But I don't think that anyone's ever going to change their opinion when they're being yelled at and told that they are dumb, stupid, out of their mind. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's going to come back from that and go, oh yeah, okay, you're right. Right. You made me feel great. Now I'm really going to consider your opinion (laughs) after you called me that. So that really took on the form of like, hey, let's talk about kindness in a bigger, just in a, in a bigger view of the world and how Mm -hmm. we not only treat one another, but how we have conversations with people that are different than us. You know, in Colossians 3, 12, God tells us, put on kindness, gentleness, compassion, humility, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if Mm -hmm. anyone has a grievance against one another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, you are also forgiven. And above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. I love everything about Christmas. And Great American Family Channel is the place to find your new favorite holiday movies all year round. You might be wondering how to watch Great American Family Channel. You can text CHRISTMAS to 877-999-1225 for more details. And for you Full House fans, they have all the Full House and Fuller House reruns too. Text CHRISTMAS to 877-999-1225. Now, when we think of putting on, I think I put on my clothes every Mm -hmm. morning. I put on my makeup. I Mm -hmm. put on my lipstick. I put on Mm -hmm. my shoes to walk out my door. But the first thing I need to put on, Mm -hmm. put on kindness, Mm -hmm. put on compassion, Put on humility and gentleness and patience. I mean, and those are things I need to be aware of. It's not easy. It's a choice mm-hmm. that you make mm-hmm. and it's a, a choice that you practice mm-hmm. and you practice something enough, it becomes a habit. Yeah. And it's the, the fact that we have access to put those things on through the power of the spirit at yes. work within us. It's like every day you're choosing to surrender to the spirit's work in you. You're choosing to, to die to self, to be like kind to others who maybe aren't kind to you. Mm-hmm. And it's the spirit who enables us to do that. He's the one at work in us to do all these yes. beautiful things to show anybody who watches the view or anybody who encounters you in real life or anybody who like is seeing you in those spaces where you've chosen to surrender mm-hmm. to yourself and lean into the spirit to submit to the spirit. Um, and I, you know, I I think it is, um, one of the ways that the world sees that Christians are different is by our love. They see Mm -hmm. our love and our kindness and it really does stand out. And I'm, I'm so glad that kindness is important to you. (laughs) Um, and I hope it's important to everyone that the the spirit shaping us to look more like Jesus, Mm -hmm. the spirit, he, like we talked about, he's not an inanimate force or power source that he's a person. Um, and one of the things that's tricky about that is even Christians, there's a temptation to try to use the spirit to manipulate things as though he is a power source that we can use to get what we want or things like mm. that. Um, and uh, even even if it's a, a real desire, I don't know if you've ever felt this or not, but like, I just want to know what God's will for me is. Like, what does mm-hmm. God want from me? Just tell me what you want and I'll do it. And I've been at places where I've wanted to know that um, just like, tell me what to do and I'll do it. It's almost like, um, I'm treating him like, just give me the instruction manual as opposed to let me be in a relationship with you. So it'd be kind of like if, um, I'm coming to your house and you give me direction, like we're, let's say we're, we're going to your house and it's like a four hour drive. And at the beginning of the trip, you can either give me the instructions and say, okay, turn left here, turn right here. There you go. There you go. Or you could get in the car with me and ride with me and show me how to, and say, here, take a turn left, turn left here, turn mm-hmm. right here. And then we're having conversation on the way. And that is a much more relational experience. Yes. It's not this transactional, like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. It's the spirit is with us always to guide us and prompt us in these little ways. And I bet you have so many stories. And I know I do as well of just these little prompts Mm -hmm. That sometimes the spirit will like be like, hey, turn left here. And you're like, okay. And then you see this beautiful view or, and that's an analogy. But I mean, I've had times that I've been tempted to like prompted to pray for someone. Yes. And it's been, and I'll reach out and it'll be the exact 
moment mm-hmm. that they needed that. Yep. And if we're just not making that active choice to to lean in and just doing our own thing, we miss the beauty of mm-hmm. that. If we just get the instructions, just want to know what to do, just tell me where to go. We miss the joy and the intimacy of the relationship. Yeah. That's like, it's so beautiful. It is. And I love that he's with us. Um, there's this story in scripture of a guy who wanted to use the power of the spirit, uh, but not actually have the spirit. He didn't care about the spirit. He just saw all the, the cool things that the apostles were doing. It's in the book of Acts when the, when the church is just getting started. Mm-hmm. And there's this guy named Simon the Magician who was a magician and everybody was in awe of his magical powers. Um, but then he sees the spirit at work and he's like, whoa, I want that. Yeah. And they rebuke him because they're like, no, no, the, the spirit is, is, it's a person. He's not a force that you're using. He's a person that you engage with. Um, and so he, he gets rebuked because he wants the, the power, not the spirit. Um, so that is a cautionary tale for me yes. <laughs> as a person who yes. has access to the spirit. To remember the the relational aspect. Um, and one of the things the spirit does in us is produce that spirit fruit in us that we've talked about. But that takes time. Fruit takes time to grow. It does. I mean, plants in general. George, your your fiddle leaf fig. <laughs> and yours uh, is Fritz. Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> we both have fiddle leaf figs yeah. that we love. I yeah. know. And I have vegetable gardens, so I I I know how long it takes for things to grow and be nourished and fed. And, oh, I love that. So it's the same, it's the same with us, but the more time you spend, Mm -hmm. the the more relational time you spend with God, the more you grow. Yeah. Have you, what are some places where you've seen some, some growth lately in your own, in your own life? Uh, patience. Mm -hmm. That is, I feel like it's been an ongoing, (laughs) an, an ongoing, um, like fruit of the spirit for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I say that in a way that I, I, I've become a very patient person. Mm. It doesn't stress me out anymore. And I almost expect it. And it mm. actually is a very nice quality to have that I've developed. I kind of giggle with it because especially in the world, in a world that where we live, where we are by nature, impatient people mm-hmm. and the world is getting faster and faster mm-hmm. and you have everything at your fingertips. It's hard to be patient mm-hmm. and not by my will, but God's will, like God has given me, the Holy yep. Spirit has given me an amount of patience that I find remarkable <laughs> and I am so grateful for it. Um, and yeah, there's lots of other things. I mean, the fruit, I could I could count all of them and say, I right. see growth in every, whether it's self-discipline. Right. That's important what you just said, because one thing that get, people often, when they talk about the fruit of the spirit, they actually accidentally pluralize it and say like the fruits of the spirit. Oh. But it's not nine separate fruits. It's one fruit with yes. nine attributes. Yes. So it's like if you found nine adjectives to describe an apple, mm-hmm. um, that's sort of like what what's happening with the fruit of the spirit is it's these, these nine things described. So the fact that you're seeing all of them being developed in you over time is like, that's not anything that you did. That's him growing his fruit in you. And it's (laughs) so cool when you see it and you're like, I know it. Look what you've done. This isn't me. I'm not patient. Yeah, you are. And now you're showing it through me. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And it's being open to receiving it too Mm -hmm. and watching watching the growth. And, and I, for anyone listening or watching, just remember if you don't feel like you're growing fast enough or you're struggling with something that is a fruit of this, that is the fruit of the spirit. The fact that you know, you're struggling with it (laughs) means you're aware of it and, and he's doing his work in you. So don't just don't bow out, you know, don't, don't lose hope. Like this isn't working fast enough and God's not doing a work in me quickly enough. Right. Maybe God is, uh, extending patience upon you. (laughs) That's He's growing your patience as you recognize you're not patient. Yes. So don't be discouraged in that way. And just know that if you're aware and you're recognizing Mm -hmm. and you're seeking and praying for Mm -hmm. those things in your life, um, God hears you. He's at work. It works. And I, I, I want to, just co-sign what Candace just said, because one of the things that was so encouraging to me when I read this was the first century historian, Josephus, he, he logged a lot of information about the early church. And one of the things that he said is that the early church 
used, they waited three years to affirm new, con- new converts to Christianity because they wanted to take time to see, is this person changing? Oh. Is the spirit doing his work in this person? Otherwise, they might not really be a Christian. They might be somebody who's pretending to be a Christian, which was a problem at the time because people were sneaking into the church to persecute the church and coming in as wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm-hmm. And so they would say, well, we're going to watch your life for the next three years and we'll know if you became a Christian or not because we'll see the spirit at work in you. But three years. So be patient with yourself. Yeah. The, the Lord is patient with you. He sure is. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to our, our Bible memory verses because we have verses one through four and it's in first John chapter five. And I'm reading from the Christian standard Bible. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the father also loves the one born of him. This is how we know that we love God's children when we love God and obey his commands. For this is what love for God is to keep his commands. And his commands are not a burden because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, I hope that maybe you enjoyed some of your own matcha or tea or coffee while you listened to this or watched. If you do have any matcha questions or instant coffee questions, you know, we can answer those. Okay. We're building a list of questions from you and it's going to be a little while, but when this podcast season wraps up, Tara Lee and I are going to have a special private live stream where we read your questions and we get to have fun together with you. You'll get all the ticket details early if you're on the podcast email email list. So go to Candice.com and ask us your questions because we want to get to know you. You'll also see a link where you can buy He's Where the Joy Is, the study from Tara Lee that we're talking about through season one. And until next time, be grateful all day, every day. This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved.